Then he came up to his father and said, Respected father, just now I went out into the suburb area, you know, in the rural areas, and I saw that our citizens, because of survival, doing many things that is comically heavy, also labor for food and clothes, and then killing many other beings because of their own life of survival, even cheating, killing, you know, and uh, harming each other. After they die, definitely they will fall into the three evil paths, yeah? You know, remember what is that? What is the evil path? Paths, the three. Hungry ghosts. Yeah, hell. Hungry ghosts. An animal. An animals, yeah, bad animals, yes. Not just good animals. <laughs> or maybe normal animal, good animal. Depends, huh? Depends on the the karma. So I feel very, very sorry for them. Please, can you give me one of our um, store of food so that I can go and give it to them, mm. to the poor people? Yes, yes, it's up to you. My wealth is yours, yes. If you want to go and give to them, I'm happy too. <laughs> okay, after that, he went out and uh, posted everywhere. He said, all the country people, anyone who are poor has not enough food to eat, not enough clothes to wear, come here to my house. You take as much as you need, okay? All right. So everyone uh, heard that. Everybody come, the people who are poor, sick, lonely, no one take care, everyone come there. Many people came from far away as uh, hundreds of miles away, yeah, or even more, yeah. Mm. People come from 3,000 miles here even, I don't know how they do that. Uh, no no car, they probably take, take time. Huh? Mm. The one who is healthy carry the, the weak and sick, <laughs> they help each other. <laughs> Yeah, the one who have eyes, take care, you know, take the blind. <laughs> so anyone come there who, if they want rice, they have rice. If they want clothes, they have clothes. Everyone have everything they need. After a while of charity, many of the stores in his house have gone down. So the storekeeper came in and said to the father, you know, the owner, Sir, your son has given many things away already. Uh, if uh, the king and other officials come here, how can we make a party and treat them? So please reconsider this. Don't be too late, and later there's nothing left. <laughs> One third is already gone. One third yet, so that means his family very rich. One third is gone. And two thirds still there. So, But the father think, Rather, rather empty all the storerooms, but not to make my son unhappy. <laughs> ah, don't you wish to have such a father? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after a while, the, all the storage is uh, less, two thirds less, gone. Yes. So the <laughs> storekeeper come again <laughs> to the father and say, Sir, uh, Two-third of all our storage is gone already. If you don't stop this charitable work, then uh, even we have nothing to eat. <laughs> so the father thought, I love my son too much. I don't want to make him unhappy, but maybe we can think of something to lessen all the people, the beggars come in, half of them. Then maybe we still have something to use. Okay, so the, the storekeeper uh, hear that, so he, he locked all, all the store, went somewhere else. Because the, door, the store is locked and the storekeeper is not there, so all the begging people go direct to the great charity boy. And then he took them to the storeroom and the storekeeper is not there, no keys. <laughs> and then he asked somebody to go and look for him a long, long time. And then we found him, 
And then he came back and opened the store. But he doesn't give a lot. Okay. And then the great charity thought to himself, the stopping of charity, it cannot be directly from the storekeeper. He won't dare do that. It must be my father. Yeah. But because I am the son, I also don't dare to uh, oppose my father. Mm. Also, uh, a son should not exhaust the wealth of the family. Mm. Even then, in the storeroom, there's not much anymore. So what can I do now so that I can continue to give to the citizen so that they're happy and contented? Then I would feel happy myself. And then the great charity asks everybody, in this world, what kind of profession <laughs> that <laughs> earn lots of money, <laughs> earn the most money? What, what kind of profession? Tell me. Huh? Jewelry. Jewelry? Oh, not necessary. Bankers. 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 <laughs> Lawyer? Technology? Technology? Apple? <laughs> Selling Apple? <laughs> Apple computer. <laughs> no, not Apple. <laughs> Yeah, even selling apples, you can have a lot of money, huh? Bill Gates and all that, yeah? Right. What did you say? What else? Mining. Mining? Huh? Gold, mining gold. What else? Anybody else? Artists. Huh? Artists. Artists. No, not <laughs> except you are Biscasso. Huh? You mean movie stars? For example. Yeah, they are also artists. It depends on what artist, right? Huh? Engineers. 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 Insurance companies. What? Insurance company? Bankers. Bankers. Oh, somebody told already. Okay. What do we do in Togo to earn lots of money? Assurance. Assurance, insurance. Oh, oh. So we are in the wrong field of job. <laughs> How about Supreme Master Ching Hai job? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> artists depends on what kind of artist, you know. <laughs> Some are very poor. Huh? Musicians and poets are poor. <laughs> Remember the joke I told you? <laughs> One man went to the doctor and said, Doctor, I cannot go to the toilet. I cannot poo for three days. <laughs> so the doctor said, Did you eat something wrong? He said, No, no, nothing wrong. Did you drink something bad? No, nothing. Say, uh, What job are you doing? He said, I'm a musician. So the doctor take out twenty dollar here, go home and buy some food to eat. <laughs> if he didn't eat nothing for three days, how can he go to the toilet? <laughs> Not all musicians are like that. Just a joke, okay? After he asked what kind of job that brings a lot of money, yeah, earn a lot of money, uh, one of his workers say, Sir, if you plant five kind of cereals, then we earn a lot of money. Yeah. And the other one say, if you're not afraid of danger, uh, and you can travel far away, then that will earn and and do uh, like a merchant buying selling business, then you earn a lot of money. And another one say, sir, <laughs> all this above is useless. They don't bring you any success. If you want all the beings on this planet happy, then you should go deep into the sea and find those uh, precious stones and all that. Then that's the best. Yeah. So the great charity say, plant trees, go far to buy and sell. It's not much uh, uh, money. Eh? Okay, maybe go in deep in the sea to find precious stones. That should be the best. Okay, precious stones, more expensive, right? 
and you don't have to do anything. Just go deep in there and find them. So, okay, I will go. I'll go and do that. <laughs> and then he came up and said to his parents, my beloved parents, please allow me to go into the sea to bring uh, precious stones and all this gold and thing to come back and give it to the citizens. And the, both parents were so scared, saying, no, 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 my son, anyone who went to the deep sea for all this, they are poor people, they are very poor people, have no, no way to survive. So they, if they stay home, they would die anyway. Therefore, they do this kind of thing. You are not so poor. Why you have to go to the deep sea to do this? I'm, and then you make us worry so much about your life. Okay, if you want to do charity, just go and take everything out from the store. Yeah, give them all out. We, we don't say anything. Because if you go into the sea, there are many many accidents. Big wind, you know, big waves, big fish, uh, uh, poisonous dragons, and uh, ghosts and devils, demons, yeah? It's very difficult to escape. Please, why do you bring your precious life into such a detrimental, dangerous situation. Please don't, don't go, don't go, don't go. <laughs> don't think nonsense anymore. And uh, great charity was so sad, so sad, so sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> he was thinking to himself, I want to make a big uh, future for myself. And then even I worry about my little life and how can I make it, you know, how can I make a big business? And then at that time he prostrate in front of his parents and said, I prostrate to you, both of you. If you stop me from going to the sea, finding precious substance to bring back, to have, help our citizens, then I would just stay here. I would just stay prostrate. I won't get up anymore. Ultimatum. <laughs> I want it, I want it. <laughs> so used to with get what he wants, né? I guess. But this is not really a spoiled kid. He, he has good heart, that's all. So after they heard the son say that, they get heartbroken, yeah. And they asked everybody else to, to advise him, please don't go, you know, it's very dangerous and far away and many people go, not many people return. You have to remember, we are very diligently praying for many, many years and we have only you, you're precious to us. And now you've grown up, why you leave us lonely and worried? Please stand up. Please then uh, go eat something and make us happy. He still stand there, uh, laying there, you know, prostrate on the ground. So. <laughs> if you permit me to go, then I stand up. If not, I just lay here. <laughs> yeah, typical. <laughs> typical. Your son like that? <laughs> good son, yeah? Uh, good. He lay there six days, no drinking, no eating, nothing. And parents also staying and coming, going six days, talking, advising, begging. But he don't stand up, he just rather stay there hungry and thirst. So the parents so scared and talk to each other. Our son is so determined, yeah, from beginning to the end. He would not change his mind. So, okay, okay, we close our eyes and say, okay, let him go. Because if he stay here after seven days, he would die anyway. Okay, so the parents talk to each other already and come up, come to the sun, lifted him up and say, okay, you go 
take something to eat, I agree. I, I allow you to go. We allow you to go. Oh, so happy, happy. Oh, go eat, eat. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wrote a, a notification paper. And then, uh, you know, tape it everywhere. Say, I'm going to the deep sea to find precious stuff. If anyone want to come with me, welcome. I will give uh, all the necessity, uh, luggage and everything. And then 500 people <laughs> like to come with him. When they are departing, the departing day, the king, the, the officials and many people come out, oh, many tens of thousands come out to say goodbye. And they offer them, you know, uh, dry food and uh, money and many things and drinks and all that for the journey, yes. Everybody was happy, yeah. Everybody prayed to and, and wished them a peaceful journey and peaceful return, safe return. After a few days on the sea, they stopped in front of the sand beach, so everybody came up there and take a rest. Unfortunately, there's a big group of robbers. They went there, and there are too many, too many to overpower them with a man number, yeah, so they cannot oppose him. He knows he cannot, so he took all the food and whatever they have and gave it to the robbers, and then continue his journey. Oh, this is oh sorry. This not it's not to the beach yet. It's not to the sea yet. They were just walking and found a, a sandy beach and then rest. And then the robber came, took everything. All right, but they still continue. And they uh, came to a citadel. You know, a city. Yeah, it's called Fongbak City. In this city, there was a noble person, rich person. His name is Katile. He's a Brahmin caste in India. He has one daughter, very, very beautiful. Her body is also like golden color, gold. And her hair is like jewel, and shiny, beautiful. And uh, she's the most beautiful girl at that time. 84,000 uh, noble family, prince and all that, they all came to ask her for a wife. She refused them all. Now uh, the great charity man came in front of the city wall, in front of the house, and knocked at the door, want to borrow some money. Yeah. And then she saw somebody knocking at the door, and she came out and peep, have a look. So he came in, and she was suddenly very happy and touched in her heart, so happy she came in and tell her father, Pa! <laughs> Outside, there's a person knocking at the door. He is my husband. <laughs> All the prince and noble people he don't want, she didn't want. That's my husband. And of course, the noble rich man is so happy. Finally, she <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> so many people came, and he's already hopeless. Yeah, so. Uh, if she can find one husband now, she, of course she's happy. So he came out happy. And he opened the door and he saw this man, you know, very distinguished looking. Yeah, yeah. Dignified personality. So it's not like normal men. Mm. So he was very happy inside. He said, What are you here for? Mm. So he said, No, but sir, my heart aching because of. Many citizens are hungry and poor, so I volunteered to go to the deep sea to try to find precious stones and more treasure to bring it back, to give it to them. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the middle way, a ro the robber came and took everything from us. Please, can you uh, lend us 3,000 pieces of gold? When we come back, I will return it to you. So the noble rich man say, 
Uh, please come in the house, come in the house. There's no problem, no problem. Mm. Even uh, 10,000 uh, pieces of gold I have. <laughs> I give it to you. Uh, okay, and then he came in into his uh, store, took out gold, and he go to the store, bring his daughter with him. And uh, as he walking, he was laughing, he said. And then, oh, no, he take the gold and then he bring his daughter out also. And he was smiling and say, this sum of gold, I give it to you. Not lending, but give it to you, yes. And this is my daughter. You know, numerous noble prince and noble people came to ask for her hand, she refused. Uh, today I saw you, I'm very pleased. And my daughter also agreed to marry you. Would you... Uh, <laughs> uh, would you okay? <laughs> Tell me if you're okay, you know? So, great charity said, no, poor sir. Uh, at the moment, I, I'm going out to the sea. It's uh, more danger than luck. I don't even know if I come back or not come back or when I come back. If I accept your proposal, proposal right now, if unfortunately I have accident or die or something happened to me, then I will not fulfill my promise of what to do. Yeah. So the nobleman said, no, no. Okay, when you come back and you are perfect in one piece, then you can still accept them accept my proposal. He said, okay, in that case, yes, I agree. You know, Only when he come back perfect, then he will agree. That's okay then. Good compromise, right? Good compromise. And then the noble man give him 3,000 pieces of gold and then many other necessity, you know, food, clothing, blanket, extra, everything that he lost, he replenished them all. And uh, of course, he the young boy was very happy, thank you, thank you, and then go. Mm. 